What's up, everybody? I am Jay Carver here in my new home at the Run It Up Studios in Las Vegas. And I'm going to be showing you guys some short deck 6 plus hold'em hands. As you may have heard recently on Poker Stars, we've launched 6 plus hold'em. And if you go, I don't know what that is, maybe you've heard a little bit about it. Well, I'll walk you through the basics of the game. It's actually pretty simple. Um, it's a normal Texas Hold'em game, except that there are no twos, threes, fours, fives in the deck. Uh, ace counts as low now, counts as a five. So ace, six, seven, eight, nine is a straight. Flushes are better than full houses just by the rarity of making a flush. Otherwise, everything is the same. The structure of the game is also a little bit different. The game is played with an ante, everybody antes, and the button double antes. So the structure is a little bit different. The game is a little bit different, but it's so much fun. There's so much action, and I can't wait to go through 20 hands with you guys from a bunch of different tables and different stakes. Uh, there's some cool ones in here. I haven't seen too many of the hands yet, but the few that I did see uh, is pretty awesome. So I think you guys are really going to like it. Uh, with that, let's uh, hop in there. Okay, whoa, it's been a long time since I made a YouTube video. Hope you guys are excited about this as I am. So let's uh, get the cards in the air here. We got a heads up hand. This is $100 real money uh, played recently. I put some of the little rules there on the side just in case you forget. Uh, the most important one being that a flush is better than a full house. So let's fire this up here. So both players limp, that's the, or sorry, both players ante, that's the 200 in there, and uh, button double antes. Now, let me also say this, I have played a few thousand hands of this game. I am not an expert beast killer crusher, um, but I, I feel like I've got a good grasp of the game, uh, at least uh, good enough to walk through, and no one, very few people really understand this game uh, fully. It's a very complex, uh, beautiful game, and one of the reasons why it's so complex and interesting is because of the anti-structure, um, not something that many people are, are used to, not something that's commonly played, so um, something to keep an eye out for as we go through these hands here. So I don't know either of these players, but I see 6-7 offsuit is our button, so king-10 suited first to play, pretty good hand, just like in regular hold'em. 6-7 offsuit is pretty bad, right? It's not quite deuce three, like deuce three would be you know, the worst lowest two cards. 6-7 is a little bit better, but not much. So t King-10 limps, interesting. Remember, these guys are really deep with 150 antes. And 6-7 offsuit raises. Now, this is just like a position play. Maybe he thought his opponent was limp folding uh, too much. I mean, risking uh, 600 more to win the 100 that's already in there plus the 200, plus the 100, to so risking 6 to win 400. Uh, I This is not a traditionally good hand. So if you're like writing down notes, how to play 6 plus hold them, raise 6, 7 offsuit on the button. No, no, no. Uh, this would usually just be a check. Uh, but our our Bask, Baskrovin 87, by Baz, let's go with Baj. Uh, so Baj here decides to raise and uh, King-10 calls. King-10 suited, uh, we can see, uh, was a favorite here. Could have raised, but limp calling makes sense to me. Seems reasonable. So, uh, Baj flops a bottom pair and a straight draw, right? A nine would make him a straight, and that's why I got the thing over there right underneath here. Uh, ace, six, seven, eight, nine would be a straight. So, King-10 first to act, and we'll check surely. And now, six, seven here with a decision to make, but you would think that six, seven would want to bet. Doesn't really want to give free cards to a lot of different hands. Maybe gets even a hand like... I don't know, pocket tens could arguably fold maybe, even a hand like once in a while, maybe like jack eight, probably not, but maybe a hand like 10, seven, a better hand than ours that would fold. Uh, but even denying a hand like king, queen, a turn card here uh, would be useful. So it goes check and check though, interestingly enough, turn seven. So we improved to trips, but proto makes the flush draw. And at this point, does Proto want to bet? Now, Proto was the one who limped and called the raise. So he has he often has low cards more than the button who's raising and saying, I've got a good hand. I've got ace-king, ace-ace, ace-queen, um, you know, jack-10, a very powerful hand in this game. Uh, so uh, you could arguably bet out here as Proto. Uh, he does not, just happy to check. 1,200 here from trips. That makes sense. The time for checking is behind us. 
And I think we'll just call as deep stacked as we are. You could definitely arguably check raise here, though, would be an interesting and powerful play. And just a call, though. Oh, and that's a good river for Proto, rivering the nuts, except for quads. That's the only hand that beats him. Also, 6-8 of spades would be a straight flush. That's extremely hard to have either of those hands, even in short deck. So King-10 suited loves this spot. Now, do you want to check and give... Uh, your opponent a chance to potentially bet and probably good hands, but also maybe could bluff uh, if he somehow needs to bluff here as played. I uh, did go check, check on the flop. It's an interesting hand. Uh, I wonder in a heads up uh, game, obviously the dynamic of what's happened matters a lot, uh, but I wouldn't hate to see another check raise in this spot. Uh, uh, sorry, I wouldn't hate to see a check raise in this spot. Uh, and if you're six, seven here, I... Remember, we make a straight as well now with the six, but you have to be very, very afraid of the flush. And uh, you also lose to full houses at this point. You lose to jack 10, if that's somehow a hand that Proto ends up with in this spot here. Uh, six ten, you lose to also. So Proto checks and Baj, ooh, bets 2,500. So we've got a very easy and beautiful check raise. This is a real money pot. This is a big boy. And so at this point with 6,500 in the middle, I don't see how you don't shove and hope you get called by worse here. I mean, I don't really see. You could make it like 6,000, 7,000, but I think you just shove and pray your opponent has a boat. Uh, I don't really see what else you could do in this spot. And the proto does go all in. And now if you're Baj, I would just fold. Uh, I feel like we do lose to a lot of hands. You know, we don't even beat full houses. We don't even beat... I mean, our opponent would never have a single seven heroes played. Our opponent either has a flush maybe something like uh nines full uh, somehow uh maybe a full house but even that it's like i mean maybe it's possible i guess but unlikely right because as the limper preflop we would almost never have aces and just limp call so we don't have ace ace you know we do, what do we have eight eight check check flop check call turn check jam river eh, maybe i don't really know about that though nine nine okay i guess so anyway, I think if I was Baj, I would fold here, put my opponent on a flush, unless they had some sort of crazy uh, bluffing sort of history. Uh, let's see what Baj does here. He calls, whoa! And that's a $30,000 pot, ladies and gentlemen. Going to the King-10 of spades. Whoa! Crazy action. Yeah, don't know about that river spot. It's definitely uh, tough, man, facing a huge bet like that. Baj decides to call and loses that one. Okay, on to the next hand. What do we take away from that hand? Well, don't let your opponent river flushes. So now we're three-handed playing $50 button Annie. Uh, sorry, $50 Annie, button double Annie's, obviously. So three pretty good hands here. Jack-9 could limp or raise. This is one of those questions in short deck that uh, at least I don't know the answer to. How often do you want to be raising hands like this, trying to win the Annie's? attacking the button or are we cool with just limping you see a lot of the high stakes games where uh, limping is a uh, very often the right play it just goes limp limp and then people attack and then you can re-raise behind in this game built around antis uh there seems to be a very interesting strategy around how much do you limp versus how much do you want to open raise and in what spots so let's see what these players decide to do here that's a raise ace 10 offsuit facing a raise with a player behind us could call uh, could definitely argue a raise as well as kind of like a light three bet, but I think a call here would be fine. Also a fold, you know, this is a new game. If you're not super comfortable, I could definitely see folding. And folding is what Ace-10 does there. Hmm, interesting laydown. And now Jack-10 on the button is definitely playing. Jack-10 and Jack-9 are both very powerful hands here. So whether Jack-10 wants to come in for a call or a raise, um, you know, I think both theme seem reasonable to me. I would lean towards calling. And that is what we do. Both players flop a straight draw. Baj first to act here. And he bets half pot. Jack-10 is going nowhere uh, with his eight out draw. And remember, in the stripped down short deck, there is a lot higher chance of Jack-10 making a straight here than if there are also deuces, threes, fours, and fives into the deck. And so Jack-10, likely to call, could also raise. Does just call. Oh, hello. Turns the nutter butters. And Baj bets again here, interestingly enough. 
Uh, this is obviously a bluff on his part, trying to get his opponent to fold a hand like Queen-10, maybe. Um, a hand like Ace-Jack, we beat, so we're not trying to bluff Ace-Jack here. Maybe we get our opponent to consider folding like a King-8 suited, a King-6. King-10, King-Jack are both not folding. Uh, Queen-10, Queen-Jack, I also don't think are folding too often. Uh, arguably could have check called, but I, I, it's an interesting situation. Like it depends on what we think our opponent is capable of doing. Jack ten makes perfect sense for your opponent to have that hand, though. Even though we have a jack in our hand, I, I, I think if we're gonna bet here on the on the turn, we have to be prepared to shove on a variety of rivers, just because we have a jack in our hand and it makes it a little bit harder for our opponent to have a straight. But like, no, in my opinion, at least, I don't think it's reasonable to assume your opponent would fold. Queen Jack, Queen 10, King Jack, King 10 on this turn card. So you have to be prepared to fire another bullet uh, depending on what comes off. Now, if you have the nuts here in this situation, the pot's got 2.6K in it. We have 5K behind. We could just say, hey, I'm all in, whatever. There's already a ton of cheddar out there. Uh, there is a flush draw out. It's a little bit scary. Obviously, there's a variety of boat outs that still, still could come out. So I, I wouldn't hate shoving in this spot, but I think sl s calling is also fine. Give your opponent a chance to bluff some rivers, and you know there are obviously cards you're scared of, but you know I, I lean towards calling. Um, both seem reasonable, though. Call is what JJ Okosha decides as well, and we continue to have the nuts here on the end as JJ. And now will the Jack Nine decide to try to bluff here and represent the hand his opponent has? Uh, Baj did pretty much set this up to have a pot size bet on the river. So it looks like that's what he was at least thinking. Does he pull the trigger? It wouldn't work this time. Bang! And snap call and ship the Sherbert. $11,500 pot to JJ Okosha. Nice hand. Reasonably played by both parties, right? Reasonably played. I, I think uh, Jack9 decides, hey, now on this river, like we talked about, if you're going to bluff the turn, I think bluffing the river is near mandatory on a river like this. If your opponent does have a single a single king or a single queen, um, you know, a hand like queen eight of hearts, king ten offsuit, uh, I think those hands would find it very hard to call here on the river. Also very hard for our opponent to have a hand like ace king or ace queen as played because uh, those hands very well would have re-raised, may have re-raised uh, pre-flop. So yeah, I like the shove. Didn't work out this time. And that pot goes over to JJ. Let's go to hand number three. So the battle of Baj versus Proto continues here at 50 ante. There are some other tables mixed in, but we're just going with the order that I have them here. So queen six against jack 10. Queen six is not a hand we can fold here with the suit. We should be at least limping, could definitely raise. Um, both seem reasonable to me as long as we're not folding and it is a limp. Jack 10 against the limp here is certainly a hand that I would raise with at least some percentage of the time. How often? That's a good question. Not exactly sure. What percentage of the time should we limp versus raise? It comes down to how often our opponent is limping with good hands. How often are they limp raising? How often are they limp folding? So our opponent limps. I would lean towards raising here. I don't know, like three out of four times. Jack 10 offsuit is a pretty strong hand. Does go limp check though. Flush draw for Baj and Jack 10 flops the gutter. Queen 6 decides to bet here at that flush draw. I'm fine with that. Jack 10, I would think, would peel here. Indeed. Oh, and Jack 10 spikes the Cracker Jack. So, what does Queen High do in this spot? Once again, Baj does have the gut, the, the blocker to the straight. So, uh, he can definitely represent having that Queen 10 and potentially fire a second bullet. This was a limp and a call. Sorry, a limp and a check preflop. So, Proto could have a hand like or is unlikely to have a hand like ace king, even ace jack, ace ace king king, you know, possibly not even jack jack and just limp here in this heads up pot. So arguably this is a fine spot to bet and put pressure on some of the weaker one pair hands. Baj does check though, and uh, if I'm a proto, I'm fine with just checking back at this point. Uh, certainly fine. Maybe we don't think our opponent's going to fold an ace or a king. Uh, we don't need a ton of protection in this situation with the uh, our exact hand. I think checking seems reasonable. Ooh, Proto says overbet. Check this, Jay Carver. Whoops. Okay, so 
Interesting. Uh, at this point, Badge now not getting a great price, given how few hearts there are in the deck generally. Uh, he does have the gut shot too, though, and uh, you know, once in a long time, the queen is also live. So I, I mean, man, I, I, it's close. They're not that deep stacked, you know. Only forty antes. Actually, sorry, it's fifty ante. Uh, so uh, relatively deep stacked, eighty antes effective. Uh, it's close. I am not really sure uh, what we should do in this situation. I could easily see leaning folding um, in this exact spot. The other problem we have is we don't have the nut flush draw. Not like I'm really worried about that. You're really not worried about that in this game. I'm just saying like if you had Asex of hearts, you're in awful shape. Happens extremely rarely, but it is possible facing this over bet too. Hmm. You know, as your opponent plays, he checks pre-flop. Uh, flop was what? Flop went bet call. We bought. We yeah. We bet flop. He called. Now he overbets the turn. He's saying he has something pretty strong. Jack nine, king jack, king nine maybe. Oh, the king nine. Yeah, maybe. Maybe ace jack as played. Maybe nine nine. Um, could also have some bluffs. So we're you know ten eight. We're ahead of ten seven. We're ahead of queen ten. We are not. Uh, queen ten actually. Yeah, obviously he has a straight with queen ten. So. I'm not really sure. I, I would lean folding personally, but I assume that's not what happens here. And it does get called. And wow, River Jack of Hearts. Now, Badge makes a flush, which would beat a full house if that's what Proto has. And once your opponent overbets the turn, I don't really see how we don't check here to give our opponent a chance to bet with you know, both full houses, maybe Jack X, which is what he has, uh, and bluffs. Badge does check. Does Proto go for it here? And he does. Wow. Over bets again. Uh, I, whew, I'm i not sure about this uh, This one here. Are there enough hands that Badge is going to call here? Like, It's an interesting spot. You really have to go deep into the lab and think about what kind of hands your opponent is going to call with here. Are they going to call with... You're really hoping that he calls with an ace in this spot. And he limped pre, bet big on the flop. You're hoping that he's going to feel like you're get, you're pushing him around. You know, heads up is a lot about the dynamic, right? What you think the opponent is capable of, what you've seen them do. Um, so it's tough to say what they should be doing in these spots. This is just more of like an outside observer. Usually in this situation, I think this is uh, too big of a bet. I think we price our opponent out of the market in this situation. Um, and there are some hands that can beat us, right? Like, obviously, Proto is betting here for value, hoping to get called by worse. And uh, I think by betting this much, you just make that very hard. Queen six has an easy check jam, and Proto hmm, calls it off. I think you could probably find a fold here as well. Um, you know, your opponent, what could your opponent have that we're beating at this point? But it's tough. You put all this money in. And uh, Proto does call it off and gets shown the bad news and Badge ships that pot. Hand number four, the battle of Badge versus Proto continue. So this time, ace-10 for Proto. He is going to raise it up. Looks like this session's going a lot better for Proto. Um, so he makes it 250 and Badge with 6-7 offsuit. This is an okay defend, getting 2-1 to one in position. You're not thrilled about it, but... Equities, you know, hand strength run pretty close in, in this game. So I, I'm fine with calling here. Top two for Proto. Bottom pair for Baj. So Proto bets three quarters pot. Seems reasonable to me. And 6-7 offsuit could just fold in this spot. You know, it's not like a hand you absolutely mandatorily must call with. We have no immediate outs. Our opponent, you know, if, we're, if our opponent has, our, has an ace or uh, a 10, we're not in very good shape against that. Uh, but... I guess Badge ends up calling. Otherwise, this would be a pretty boring hand to review. Uh, but arguably, it could just fold here on the flop, but it goes bet call. And now Badge turns a straight draw, right? A nine would make him a straight, but so what? That would put Queen Jack would have a straight. Any seven would have a straight. Also, a nine would also give... Uh, nine of spades would put a flush out there also. Now, let's see if Proto slows down here or if he fires again. The eight is a little scary, but it only completes 7-9 after all. He does check here, and I think Batch could bluff, try to push Proto off. I mean, pushing him off anything would be great, right? Pushing him off pocket jack somehow, or pushing him off, um, uh, I mean, even just a hand like king-queen would still be a, a victory if we bet 1k here and king-queen folded. 
I think we'd be pretty happy about that result. Um, but Bash could also just check, try to improve on the river, and depends what he thinks his opponent is is generally doing here as far as how what kind of hands he's betting with. Or is he checking with good hands like this? He does bet a thousand here. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so I don't think Proto is going anywhere. He could check call, could check raise. Hmm, in this situation, do we want to check call or do we want to check raise? I think heads up, once we check, like our opponent could have ace eight, ace six, ten eight, ten six suited, uh, maybe ten six offsuit. If he called six seven offsuit, he could have ten six offsuit. Could have six X of spades. You know, even Queen Jack here is a double gut shot. Right, Queen Jack would peel the flop and maybe would bet like this and have has uh, eight outs to, to beat us. You know, uh, could also have just like any of the Broadway draws, I guess. King, King Jack, stuff like that. Maybe even like a hand like Jack Nine of Spades. That would probably call the flop and now have an open-ended straight flush draw. Uh, with 2.5K in the pot, I wouldn't mind a, a big raise right here. I could see calling, but it makes for some tricky situations, right? Now, let's say the river isn't an ace or a 10. So a king... Got to be a little scared. Queen, not super scared, but Jack-9 and King-Jack both get there. A Jack, mm, that doesn't really change a ton. King-Queen gets there. Queen-9, you know, nothing really, uh, not too likely to have either of those. Um, you know, 10 is a good card for us. A 9, that is a little scary. An 8, not really scary. 7, again, it's kind of scary. A lot of low cards connected there. Um, and then a six, you know, we wouldn't love it, but we wouldn't usually expect our opponent to have a six here. So when you look at all the ranks of the cards that can come on the river, uh, and of course we didn't mention spades or anything, spades not being great either, I think I would just shove here and now. And there's also plenty of hands that we want to shove here, right? Like, don't we also want to shove hands like, or at least check raise hands, hands like uh, queen jack and stuff like that? Um, but this is 50 button, button. Uh, sorry, 50 ante. So I keep thinking this is 100 ante. So these players are actually pretty deep. So shoving is too much, but we could definitely raise here. And uh, I'm not even sure shoving is too much either because he has 6.6K, 2.5K in the pot. It would be close. Uh, it's close to fine. Proto does call here. He's got a fade of 6, 7, or a 9, and 8 here, interestingly enough. So Proto checks, as is obvious, and now Baj has to realize he cannot win unless he bluffs. So the question is, how much do we bet, and will our opponent fold? <laughs> so, I mean, you got to bet a lot here, right? Because you're representing having a full house, having 7-9. you got to put a lot of pressure on here, because if you're, if you're a Baj, you got to put your opponent on a hand like an, an ace in this spot, as played, probably. I don't think our hand is good enough to check back. Hmm, probably not. We do beat some hands here, though. Let's not let's not ignore that. We do beat some hands here. Spade draws and all the Broadway draws. Does Badge bluff here on the end? If he's going to bluff, I think you have to bet a lot. A lot. Like 3K, 3,500, maybe even 4K, maybe even all in. 5K, I could definitely see it. Hmm, 2,600, it is a pretty hefty bet. And if you're a proto, it's a tough spot, right? This is a tough spot. This is not an easy decision. We're getting a little better than two to one to call here. Uh, we do beat some hands. We talked about it already. Spades, straight draws, uh, maybe some, obviously there are some pure bluffs. Uh, sometimes 10x and 6x that turn into a bluff here. We do lose to 8, 9, 8, 7 now, which kind of is annoying. But uh, it's close. It's definitely close. It's not a slam dunk call. I... <laughs> seeing the cards i would definitely call I, I mean i lean call even without knowing this is the six seven here but uh i think i i definitely wouldn't blame him for a full i just think if you put him on eight nine you go ah he could have eight nine or eight seven well if he could have those hands he could also have queen jack or king jack or queen or king queen um even more likely to have those hands so i i would lean call and proto does call and ships a nice pot here 88 86 80 bang all right, next hand. Hand number five. We've got a new table here. No more adventures of Baj and Proto. So now we're playing a little bit smaller stakes. $10 ante. So Jack-6 offsuit, that is like the seven deuce of this game. I hope Jack-6 just folds. Indeed. Ace-King, excellent hand. So 50 in the middle. We can either raise here, make it 60, 70, something like that. Or we could limp and hope our opponent raises behind us and then try to limp and raise. This is a very deep stacked game, though, for a $10 ante. 
Um, these guys have a ton of antis. So in that in that case, I would definitely lean towards raising rather than limping. But it depends on the, on the flow of the game. If there's been a lot of limps, limp is certainly fine. 70 is the raise, as predicted. Two track calls here. And we are off to the flop. Wow, this is just a cooler in the making for Jutrak here, who is an excellent player. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, this is just a cooler, right? We have top pair, nut flush draw against open-ended straight flush draw. Hat trick is going to bet. Oh, ooh, check. Okay. Jutrak is going to bet. Pretty sure of it. I would. I, I mean, I'm almost at the point where I would bet a kidney on the fact that Queen Jack Suit is going to bet here. You don't play short deck hold'em to check open-ended straight flush draws. And indeed, he does not. 146. Now, Hattrick could very easily check raise here. Quite large, you know, 800, 700. Something hefty uh, could definitely see it. Calling is possible, but I would be very surprised at this point. And we said earlier, you know, when we had the queen high flush and there was a possible ace high flush out, it is unlikely. And indeed, it is unlikely, uh, but it does happen from time to time. 626 looks good to me. And now if you're a Jew track, you have to think about this. Do you want to just call here or is there any reason to shove? If we shove, do we A, ever get our money in good? Does our opponent ever have something that we're ahead of? 7-8 or 6-8 uh, six, six, of hearts, some 6-7 of hearts? Possible, uh, but not like super likely given that he raised and everything. So what else? Is, he, is there any chance Hattrick is going to check raise and fold a hand like 10-9 offsuit or ace-9, uh, ace-king with no hearts? I mean, I think I would just call here in position and see a turn card. What does Jutrak, what does Jutrak do? Does just call. I agree with that. And what a card. Top two for Hattrick. Jutrak with the nutter butters. And now Hattrick did check raise the flop and is now in a bit of a weird situation. I would like to see him check. Uh, you do have to be very concerned of Queen Jack here in this spot. Remember, in short deck, there's just less hands he can possibly have. So Queen Jack comprises more hands that he can actually have here. Um, so I would not... I mean, I guess you could also bet and just call it off. Because even if your opponent does have Queen Jack, we have so many outs anyway uh, that maybe it's fine to just bet. And we also still get it in good against like King-10, Ace-10, Ace-9 if they don't decide to fold. Uh, but if we check, do they ever bet hands like that? I am not really sure. I am definitely not a deep stack 6 plus hold'em expert. And so we'd have to think about this a little bit here. And I, I, my first instinct was check. But now that I think about it and realize that we obviously aren't folding, if we bet, if we check and he bets 1400, we're still going to end up getting it in anyway. So. Maybe we should just bet ourselves, but does that push out worse hands than ours? Like if you bet and he folds ace ten here somehow, which is he almost never has ace ten as played, but if you if you bet and he folds ten nine or you know something like uh, something like that, it seems not it seems not great. Maybe maybe check then. Hmm, I'm I'm really not sure. I I my gut says. My gut says bet. <laughs> I'm not. I'm really not sure. Let's go with bet. I I think oh, maybe we just check. It's so many antes. We have 270 antes behind. It's only a two x pot though. It's like we're not folding anyway. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I'm gonna just press the button. Check. I like it. <laughs> and then he bets 1.1k. We're obviously not folding at this point. We could check call, see a river card, and if we improve, shove. If not, check. Um, but I think shoving here is also fine on the turn. If there's any chance he can have a worse hand than ours and call, uh, I think we have to go with it. We have so many outs anyway. Uh, I think we very easily could just shove here. It depends on how tight Drew Track has been playing. The tighter he's been playing, the less I like shoving. You know, check call, see a river. River is a seven of diamonds. We can check fold, I guess. Or if it goes check, check, we just win. Check to side, I guess, rather, is the play then. So, okay, interesting. We, my gut now, after thinking about it, says call, but shove seems totally fine. Either way, can't seem to go too wrong. 
And we've got a huge pot here with Queen Jack favored going to the river and holds for a 700 anti pot. Oh, they run it twice too. I didn't even see that until the second run out. And he lost. He still won them both. Womp womp. You know, Kevin Martin, buddy. Power of Ace King is not with you. So uh looks like we've got ourselves a fun mix here. Wow, some uh, classic heroes in this game. Bebop 86, Take Chip. All right, so Ace Queen suited, easy raise here under the gun. Could also limp, but decides to raise. Queen 6 probably folds. Jack 7 probably folds. Whoa, call. Surprised to see that, but they are uh, fairly deep sacked. 100 blinds plus deep, 100 antis plus deep. Ace 10 against the raise and the call. Could fold with 860. I'm actually not sure about this here. I lean towards calling in this spot. Ace 10 is a pretty good hand, generally speaking. Uh, we do dominate hands like Jack 10, which are very commonly played, 10 9, which are very commonly played. Um, you know, Queen 10, obviously, King 10. Um, you know, we still make Broadways ourselves. I would probably call here, and I think 10 9 will also call. Ace 10 does fold. Whoa, 10-9 says race. This is a good hand to raise once in a while here, especially as deep stacked as these players are. 10-9 is pretty strong. Like there's not, I don't know, it's kind of like the equivalent of, I don't know, king-queen offsuit in regular Hold'em maybe, like queen-jack. I mean, it's pretty close to that obviously, but it's pretty strong. Makes some good hands. If you if you run the numbers, 9-10 versus a hand like ace-queen is pretty close. So take chip decides to raise here. Elephant with ace queen suited could shove if he has seen take chip be very aggressive in the past. Um, but I think at least should be calling here. And then jack seven would get out of the way. Ace queen does call. And I would think jack seven would fold here out of fear that you're dominated by one, if not both of these players. But once you call the first bet, now you're closing the action. This might just be a, you know, hey, what else can you do? I call type spot. So we will see what he does. He does call. Whoa. And take chip flops the best hand with a pair of nines. Jew track with an open ender decides to bet here. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> uh wow, wow, wow. Okay, so I never thought did not think Jew track was gonna play this hand, but indeed he did. And now flops the open ender and needs an ace or a ten to make the straight. Take chip. You know, two thousand dollars left behind. You know, this is not a great spot to just be like, yeah, I'm all in. He does have a gut shot and top pair, though. And there is a lot of money in the pot. I mean, he does beat some hands like 8, 7, 9, 7, 6, 7 suited. He is slightly ahead of Jack-10 right now. But you have a player behind you also. So I maybe just fold this. Are we just going to get it in here for 300 antis with 10-9 off on this board? By the way, this is why Jutrak's bet is kind of powerful because now the best hand may fold and then ace-queen also will probably fold with a gut shot. Maybe take chip just runs the cards here though and just says I'm all in and then we just go from there. It can't be bad. I mean, a gut shot and top pair, maybe the pot is big enough. We just can't fold. I, I actually suspect that he doesn't fold, but maybe... Let's see. Does move all in. Ace, queen, easy fold. Jack, seven at this point. I mean, do we just call it off and hope to make a straight? It's amazing because a jack would also be good, which would be hilarious. Uh, I mean, crazy, I guess. I mean, if you're a Jutrak here, this is like a brutal spot at this point. You've put in so much money. The pot is so big. I guess you're committed to calling with your open ender. Um, just not exactly a fun situation. He does call. And this is a huge pot with 9-10 off against Jack-7 off. And there's the straight for Jutrak. Takes a pass to find a 10 or a 9 quickly. It's not going to do it. And they just run it once. And Jutrak ships that huge pot. Wow. Brutal for Take Chip. All right. Hope you guys have been enjoying these hands so far. This is Jutrak versus Koi Fisher. King 9 with, with a raise. Queen 10 calls it. 120 from Koi Fisher here. Jutrak with a gut shot. Not going anywhere. I'm just going to call here on this flop. 
Koi Fisher turns the straight. Drew track with a pair and gut shot still. Koi Fisher bets. I like that general size. Could actually maybe even bet bigger than this on the double flush draw board. And whoa! A raise. Chew track. Not afraid to get in there and just, uh, you know, start swinging. So Drew track raises and Koi Fisher calls, of course. He's afraid of Queen Nine. Um, I actually, uh, I actually, I mean, these guys are so deep. Ten dollar ante. You know, I was gonna. My instinct was maybe we should just shove on this turn here, but I guess sometimes we are just so far behind. But if Two Track can never have hands like this one, um, you know, I I wonder if we should even be doing this, not just shoving, because there's so many, you know, so many hands he could have. King Queen of Clubs, King Queen of Spades, a variety of Spades and Clubs hands. Just makes it tough to win on a bunch of rivers, even like River Jack, River, River Ten, River Eight, River Seven. Like, what are we doing? This is a very big bluffing game. If you haven't noticed yet, bluffing is a very big element of this game, and this is an action game. And Koi Fisher can't love that river. He's gonna check, and Ju Track says, "I'm all in." What else can you do at this point? Koi Fisher's got a tough decision ahead. I think. Yep, Ju Track is all in. What will Koi Fisher do here? I mean, I got to think he's calling. Okay, what am I saying? Uh, you got to think he's got a tough decision uh, in regards to calling here. Uh, I, I mean, maybe he will find the call, but if he was afraid on the turn, the spade getting there now, I mean, it makes sense that he could have spades. Dutrak could also have a nine, though, and just be pushing Koi Fisher, or, uh, you know, just trying to push Koi, Koi Fisher, well, push Koi Fisher off a chop. Words are hard. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I, I suspect that Koi Fisher folds, man, this is a tough, tough spot with the, with the straight here. Uh, I mean, we can see the Jew track is capable of aggression. And so, um, so a very tough hand here, a uh, tough spot on the river for Koi Fisher He's really got to just say, what have I seen Jutrak do in spots before this? Have I seen him show any bluffs? Uh, have I perceived? Have I been perceived to be weak in similar situations to this? Um, this is not a cold, cut and dry spot. This is the beauty of poker. It's uh, you got to make a read, got to make a decision. Does my opponent have a flush? Does my opponent have Queen Nine, or do I win? And with the price he's getting, that's really all it comes down to. What does Koi Fisher do here? He does find the call. And nice pot for Koi Fisher there, taking down a fifty-three hundred dollar pot, five hundred thirty-six antes. Bang! Another hand here of Koi Fisher and Jew Track Ace Queen, pretty nice hand under the gun. Certainly going to raise. Ace Jack decides to call. Seems reasonable to me. Koi Fisher could definitely call here, calling seventy to win two ten, getting three to one with a reasonable hand. Let's it go though. A uh, nice flop here for both players. Top two against nut flush draw and top pair. Can't go wrong either way here, either betting or checking as Anonym struts. He does bet and bets over the size of the pot. Hattrick here could very easily just raise and go with it. I think that's a reasonable thing. The overbet is a little scary, but they're so deep stacked. Maybe there's some history of overbets and things like that. I would still lean towards raising here, 700 maybe, something like it, put pressure on. But calling has to be fine too. It seems like both options probably uh, both similar value. Patrick does agree with me though and decides to raise. And now with ace queen here in this spot, you know, jack 10 is a double gut shot, king or nine. Uh, I, I think you could say, you could hope your opponent has ace eight in this spot or queen eight in this situation or hand like he has ace x of clubs. Uh, I think I would probably lean towards just shoving here. But it is a little scary, right? Because we overbet, and now our opponent has raised. Uh, but what are you going to do? Call and hope the turn card isn't a king or a nine or a club, and then go with it? So I, I would very much lean towards just shoving right here. We have 2.2K. There's 1.1K in the pot. I would lean towards shoving. Let's see what happens. I like this play. And a quick call. Ooh, and then you're dead, buddy. You're dead on the turn. They do run it twice. All right, fair enough. Everybody wins. <laughs> I can't tell whether they run it twice until there's another card or not. So, uh, yep, they do uh, chop it up. Seems reasonable by both players. 
new player, new table here. This is $5 button Annie. And so uh, 7 8 suited raises here under the gun. 10 7 folds. Ace 9 could call, could fold. Uh, I would lean towards folding, um, but you know, they're very deep stack. 250 antes deep. Ace 9, I would still probably just lean towards folding here, and he agrees. The pocket queens. Now, pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket tens, pocket nines are not nearly as good as they are in regular hold'em, uh, but still four handed. I would lean towards having the best hand more often than not. So we could easily make it 120, 110, 130 in this spot, or just call. I think both are fine. Uh, 140 though, and call off to the flop we go. Of course, we're not going to fold 7 8 suited to a, a raise in this game, uh, to a re raise in this game as deep stacked as we are, especially. So, uh, amen, amen checks and queens with an overpair, comfortable enough to bet. Don't quite love calling, but I guess we sort of have to, getting two and a half to one with a pair and a three straight flush. A lot of good turn cards for us in uh, nine, eight, seven, diamond, um, ace, not great, of course, but okay. It's close. You could very arguably fold here on this flop, depending on what we thought our opponent had, but... It's okay, and that's a pretty good turn card there. So I would definitely be checking in this spot. Our opponent looks like he has aces. You know, when it goes raise, re-raise, pre-flop, he has aces, he has kings, he has queens. He could have jacks, but, you know, whatever. He also could have ace-king. Check, give him a chance to bet all those hands. And indeed he does. Shove, I call you. I call you. Full house is going to be good. 2.5K, 500 anti-pot. Over to Amen. And reasonable hand played uh, by both players there. Uh, back to the other table, the higher stakes table, $10 button Annie, 7-6 seven, out of the way. 7-7, seven, 6-6, seven, six, six, both pretty bad hands. Plays like deuces and threes, you know, those low baby pairs. Sevens could limp or raise, both would be fine. Does go raise. 10-8 suited, pretty strong hand here. I lean towards calling. And King Queen, I would. This is definitely a reasonable candidate to raise. Make it 300, 320, something like that in this spot. Up to even 350 is probably fine. Or call. Both all right. Nope, 320. I actually like that better. Sevens can't really call here. Although it's it's close um, from a set mining point of view. Uh, if you, it, it, it's it's definitely close. Koi Fisher though decides to just fold, and 10 eight suited. Could fold as well, getting two to one here though. I mean, I would have probably, here's the other thing, Koi Fisher has to be afraid of the player behind him raising. So the more aggressive his opponent is behind him, the more I do like folding the sevens. And 10-8 suited decides to call, which I think is totally fine. Again, hands run so close in value in this game that it's certainly uh, it's certainly reasonable to call here. You're, you're doing just fine against big pairs, which is what you put Patrick on in this spot. Uh, you're doing just fine against those sort of hands, so uh, he does call. Gut shot for uh, Anonym Struts, hat trick with top pair. Uh, yep, okay, here we go. Anonym, Anonym Struts checks, hat trick with top pair here. Could check back. Uh, you have to be a little afraid of jacks in this spot, right? I mean, your opponent's going to play hands like ace jack, king jack, queen jack, jack 10, jack 9, maybe jack 8 suited. That's a lot of jacks your opponent could have here. Uh, also, 10-9 suited has a straight draw in this situation. You lose the ace-queen. I, I would not mind checking back here. Your only, the only card you really don't like is an ace. I mean, there are, there are plenty of cards you don't love, but an ace is the only card you really don't want to see. He does check here. I like that check. Hattrick, I think, has played very well from the hands we've seen. Uh, gut shot now for Hattrick. I think Anonym Struts may bet now. Try to represent having that jack. Indeed he does. And Hattrick can't fold yet after he checked the flop. Has to call here, see what the river is, and go from there. I agree with that. And that's the card we didn't want to see. Now, can Anom Struts pull the trigger here? This is not an easy bluff to make. We have to be afraid of our opponent having ace-ace exactly. Um, or maybe queen-queen. Jack-jack would all play exactly this way. Uh, we do get hands like... King King to fold, but even would Ace Queen fold in this spot? Maybe. You know, it's close. We are not going. We're giving him a good price too if we shove here because he's only got twelve hundred left. Uh I don't know. I I kind of lean towards checking. I, I think our opponent will have enough good hands 
uh, in this spot. But we do have a 10, at least we block the king 10 a little bit. Not that I'm like super worried about that or excited about that. I, I think I would check and give up. Let's see what Anam Struts does. Mm -mm, no giving up here. And now if you're trick, what do you do? So an Anam Struts finds the courage to bluff here on the end. And with just King Queen, I don't see how we call. Plus, like I said, we as Hattrick have so many good hands in this spot. Ace, Ace, uh, Queen, Queen, Jack, Jack. You know, sometimes King 10 has played. Ace, Jack, if I didn't say that. Once in a while we have that. Although, probably bet that at some point before now. But with King, Queen, I think we just fault. No, whoa. What you got, says Hattrick. And Astrid says, I got nothing but courage. Patrick goes, yep, you can keep the courage, buddy. I'll take the money. So Woot Law versus Ace Ace here, playing $10 ante. Two pretty good hands here. A limp and a raise makes sense to me. Queen 10 could re-raise in this spot even. Just calls, though. Both, pay both players flop a pair. Check in a bet of half pot and a call. Seems totally standard so far. Check, and uh, probably another bet here. Yep, and ace-ace getting a reasonable price. Decides to probably call. Seems close. We do beat some hands, jack-10 particularly. Uh, also some spade draws, jack-9. We're not that far behind, uh, you know, ace-10, ace ace-9, ace ace-king. But we are also very far behind ace-queen, ace-jack. You could definitely just fold here on the turn. I, I may lean fold, but the more aggressive your opponent is, the the better it is to call. Ooh, hmm, raising. How do we feel about raising in this spot? I didn't really think about that. Raising seems interesting. I feel like I would have raised bigger, maybe? I mean, this is a very small raise, right? It's like a min raise. Check min raise. Would you really check min raise here with like an excellent hand? I'm dubious. I I feel like, hmm, interesting spot. I feel like Ace King probably won't fold on the turn yet. Getting the price he's getting, how does he fold? He has to call two, three twenty more to win thirteen hundred. Let's see what Woot Law does here. Uh, you could also, hmm, you could also shove as Ace King. This is not necessarily. A, I mean, because if you think you have the best hand, you just move all in. I guess it's fine. There's already so much in there. Right, you have like uh, 1285 left, and there's already 1280 in the pot. So yeah, I would not mind just a straight up shove here if you thought you had the best hand. But these heads up hands are always very tough to analyze because we don't know any other hands that before them. These guys have been playing for some amount of time before now, uh, so it's tough to say. It all comes down to history and dynamic. But I feel like I generally would prefer a larger raise here. Hootlaw does call, which seems right to me. And that's a scary river card. Ace Ace, if Ace Ace pulls the trigger here, it might work. And this is, I would think, definitely going to work. I mean, we can very credibly represent a full house in this spot. Maybe a single jack once in a while as played. I mean, this is a tough spot to call with Ace King. We do beat 10 9. We do beat King Queen, which probably doesn't play this way, check raising the turn. I mean, I would never think Queen 10 will play this way either. Uh, but it's possible. You know, we do beat Ace 7, maybe, that uh, got counterfeited here on the river and now is bluffing. Uh, man, all this, like, thinking makes me want to play more short deck. So <laughs> I guess that's I guess that's a good thing, at least. I, I don't know. I would guess I would fold here as Ace King. Does he find the hero call? Yes, he does. Whoa. Okay. Bang. Ace-King, nice call on the river there. Not an easy one to make. Full-handed table here for the first time. 10-9, this is a $2 ante. 10-9 limps. Ace-Jack makes a hefty raise. Gets rid of the riffraff. Wow, 8-7 offsuit. Never scared, B. A uh, long-time grinder. Never afraid of calling. And this probably is just a fold. This is not that different from calling with like 6-5 offsuit in uh, regular hold'em. Like, it's not quite deuce three offsuit, right? Six, six, seven is pretty bad. This this is just like, it's okay, but really not great, especially with three players behind you, including one who opted into the pot uh, before you. So I would have just folded this hand. Three way to the flop here, though. Never scared B flops the 
straight draw it to the nine, but Tomas just bets out with his top pair. Does never scared me. Put some pressure on here. Obviously, he's kind of already entered into a pot he didn't necessarily have to be in. He does call 10-9 out of the way, obviously. Interesting bet here by Tomas. I think I would have preferred him to check. And now he bombs it again. Does never scared me do anything here besides just fold? I mean, Tomas's action, he raised big against the limp. Bet on the flop. Actually, did I say he bet out, by the way? I was wrong about that if I said that, because that's not what happened. Pre-flop, he just got called. So Tomas's bet makes total sense. But I mean, I mean, it's a big bet. Uh, don't get me wrong, into a pot that uh, you have to be a little concerned about. But I, if I said I didn't like his bet, his bet is totally fine on the flop. Uh, never scared B makes the light peel with the gut shot, turns the flush draw. Tomas bets pot. I think I just fold as eight with eight seven suited for the third time in the hand. But I would, I guess that's not what happens here. Never scared B, living up to his username, runs out the straight. Whoa. I wouldn't be scared either if I rivered straights all the time. And Tomas is all in, and that money is all gone. Never scared B. Ships the pot. I think Tomas got unlucky here, but I also think he should have checked the river. Uh, what are we doing? We're trying to bluff the river? I'm not really so sure I understand what the point is of betting here on the end. I think I would have just checked. Next hand here, we recognize some of these players too. Never Scared B making another appearance. He limps. Jack 9 raises. Jack 8 calls. Nice flop for both players, but I have run. Looks a little better to me. Bet's 18. Check raise by Never Scared B. Okay. I have run. Could definitely just call here. Could also uh, shove very easily with a pair and a flush draw. I think I lean towards calling in this exact spot. Given the stack sizes, we're very deep stacked. Remember, $2 ante, so these players are 300 antes deep. I think I just call here. You have to be a little afraid of higher flush draws, and you know you have pretty easy decisions to make on most turn cards, right? Think about this. Ace and a king, don't really love either of those. Queen, we have a straight draw. Jack, we make two pair. Ten, don't love it. Nine, trips. Eight, mm, straight draw gets a little bit better. Seven, don't really love a seven. Six, mm. You know, and obviously any of those in diamonds would be lovely. So I think there's enough outs here for us to just call, play straightforwardly, use our position to help us win this hand. Never scared B turns the flush draw. And if you check raise the flop and now turn the flush draw, I guess we're betting again. Indeed, never scared B fires it out. And I've run, should just call again at this point. I don't really see the point in raising. Oh, I have run says, let's think about shoving actually. Uh, I mean, I guess... I would just call, though. Why are we shoving? Let's just call. River, king of spades. Now we can fold, don't you think? River, ace of clubs. We just fold. River, ten of hearts. We just fold. Uh, I don't know. I feel like we don't necessarily have to shove here. Is he ever folding better hands than ours? I mean, he is going to call with this worse hand here. So we do get called sometimes by queen jack, king queen, king jack. Maybe actually he's shoving for... Thinks he has the best hand, just showing for a value. I would be a little bit more afraid of based on the big check raise. And also, we just, again, can just play the river out kind of normally. I'm not sure. I am definitely not a 300 big blind uh, short deck, a 300 anti short deck uh, wizard. I mean, it can't be bad. This can't be bad. I just wonder which is better, right? Never scared be has to call, of course. And we've got a big pot here with I've run as a favorite with his pair but not a very big one. And we're going to run it one time or two times. We'll see. First board. Bang. Jack nine wins. Okay. Run it once, baby. Nice hand. Jack nine takes it down. Okay. Back to the never scared Tomas table. Ten, eight suited limps. Nine, seven min raise. We should be raising bigger if we're going to raise here. Everybody comes along for four, though. Nice flop for Chipmunk. Tom Tomas with two pair here. Never scared B must just be splashing around a little bit. Um, obviously a very successful player uh, in tournaments mostly, but cash also. Chipmunk, open-ended straight flush draw. Why are you playing poker if you're not check-raising open-ended straight flush draws? I'd make it 100, something like that here. You can make it pretty hefty. Whoa, just a call. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Straight flush. Now I like the check. Tomas is just blasting. Never scared me out of the way. I mean, I guess we're just calling. 
if we're going to check all the flop, how do we not check all once we have the straight flush? And wow, what a cooler here. It's going to go check, bet, shove, call. I got a straight flush, buddy. It's going to do it. Unlucky for Tomas on the river there. But I think Tomas should have raised bigger preflop. Also, Chipmunk should have probably raised on the flop. Right, four preflop, that was probably a little too small. Three-handed here, ace-king going to raise, six, seven out of the way, eight, nine calls, pretty reasonably. Straight draw for Goose Ma and SSS with the top pair, back to our flush draw, top kicker. Bet and a call, ace is the scariest card in the deck, worst card for SSS. Eight of spades, though, probably will keep Goose Ma in. Wow, SSS checks here, okay. Uh, could bet as Guzma, I guess. Maybe get our opponent to fold something that shouldn't if it, if he knew what we had. Maybe like ace, queen, maybe like two, jack, something like that. 42. I don't mind bet. SSS raise is scary. And I guess Guzma can call here, but it has to be very concerned at this point that we are very behind getting three to one here, though. I don't mind the call. And whoa, what a river. SSS may just shove here on the end with two pair. Got to be a little worried. Any seven does make a straight. But we shove and get called. And eight, seven wins. Reasonably played by both players there. Could have checked on the end, but I don't know. The question I have is, if you shove this river with ace-king, does, does king nine call you? Does king eight call you? Does ace eight somehow or ace nine call you? I'm not so sure of that, and if that's not true, then we maybe should be checking and give our, give our opponent a chance to bluff with something that he needs to bluff with, you know, one of the missed draws of some variety. Okay, five more hands left. Uh, let's go through this one. So 7-6 suited. Could limp this hand very reasonably. Jack's limp or raise. King-10 folds. 8-10 calls. A-7 calls. Trips for Le to cool. Jack Jack just bets here. I would be scared on this board. When the button calls, this player calls, over pairs are not what they are in regular Hold'em. So I would seriously consider uh, checking. Betting is also fine and proceeding very cautiously. Remember, this is $2 button ante. So we are very deep stacked here. I'm okay with betting. I just think we have to proceed very cautiously. The eight calls. A7 with the backdoor flush draw. I would call here as well. Mm, Dapa Dan says no. Just because we have that backdoor flush draw, I would stick in here. Even though you're definitely worried you don't have the best hand. And what a turn card! I was totally thinking about the A7 of clubs here. Top boat, though. By the way, he would have had flush outs, even regardless. So I would bet here again. If you're going to bet the flop, I feel like you should probably bet the turn. Not huge, maybe just like 80, something like it, 75. Our opponent could have an 8, which is what he has. He could have 10 9, which we're way ahead of. May still call you if he has a flush draw or like pocket tens, pocket nines. That's a pretty big bet. I would have gone a little bit smaller, but we are so deep stacked that it, it is certainly fine. And actually, maybe betting bigger is better here because the hands you want to bluff with also want to bet bigger. You know, if you ever have clubs in this spot, obviously hearts would probably want to bet bigger. So I'm, I'm okay with the l larger sizing. Eight can't go anywhere. Eight has to find an eight on the river. Does not. Flush, though, kind of scary. Remember, a flush will beat the full house here. So Jack-Jack is going to bet fold, I guess. Bet fold or check call. Nope, bet. Now, if late too cool shoved here, I actually wonder if uh, <laughs> if the jacks would just fold. I mean, the price would be so good. But the thing is, we don't really beat a ton of hands. 7-7 seven, seven, probably just flats here on the end, afraid of the flush also or the higher full houses. Ace-8. That's a hand we can beat, I guess. 8-7 mm, also might just flat. But anyway, I think 8-10 is just going to either call or fold here on the end. It's a t tough spot for 10-8, right? Like, what do we really beat that plays this way? We don't beat ace-ace. We don't beat jack-jack. We don't beat 8-7 uh, suited. We don't beat ace-8. We don't beat flushes. We only beat his 10-9, which would be a, a crazy bluff to make with 10-9 here. So this could be a sick laydown, but... Uh, I guess not. If you shove, I wonder if maybe Teo folds. He does just call here, though. And Jack's going to ship, ship that pot. I think we can probably find a fold there on the end, but I understand folding is 
not the easiest, or rather, not the most fun thing to do. <laughs> easy. It's easy to do, but not very fun. Ace Queen raises. Jack seven calls. Pair and a flush draw against top pair, top kicker. Check bet seems reasonable to me. Just a call. This is a little too scary of a board to check raise with just top pair, top kicker. King gives a gut shot also to Mad Starfish. We're definitely checking as Berto. And Mad Starfish bets kind of on the small side. Could have bet a little bit bigger here, applied a little bit more pressure. Berto makes a good call. Tough spot to call here, but does call. And no trips on the river. Berto checks, Mad Starfish bets, and maybe we can just fold on the turn to avoid this pain situation that we're in. Like we beat Diamonds, we beat 10 8, 6 8. We don't beat King 10, don't beat King Jack, don't beat any of the sevens, obviously. Uh, our opponent, what happened pre flop in this hand? Pre flop was just raise call. Yeah, raise, raise call. So our opponent could have 7 7 or 9 9 as played. Not 7 7 very likely, but 9 9, I guess, possibly. Could have 7 9 suited also as played. Uh, King 7 suited would make sense also, potentially. Queen 7 suited. Like, there are a lot of hands that do convince me that we should maybe just fold here. But maybe I'm just a nit, guys. Maybe I'm just a nit, always trying to fold. Whoa! A shove here on the river. And I do not think that's going to work. I thought the turn was a little speculative. This river, I actually think maybe is better than calling. River shove is better than calling. Because maybe we can get King Jack, King 10 to fold. And some other hands that are not full houses. But I don't know if trips are going to fold here on this board. But uh, yeah, interesting check shove here on the end. Uh, Mad Starfish, I assume, calls and wins this pot. Hand too good to do anything else besides call. And there you go. Dang. All right, our final three hands. We go back to the high stakes land. It looks like Badge has been crushing this game. The big, the, the ante is $100. He has $51,000 in front of him. That is a mountain. 8-8 eight, eight limps. 10-6 suited raises, 8-8 eight, eight calls, reasonable play, and what a flop here. Proto checks, Baj decides to check as a slow play, I like it, and wow, there's the date with the 8. Proto first act here, and unfortunately for him, has gotten massively coolered. 8s full of 10s against 10s full of 6s. So Proto leads, Baj is just going to call here again, nothing really afraid of, and... uh Hope to use his position on the river to just call and bust Proto. He does just call here. No reason to raise against the overbet. Sp uh, heart is scary here on the end, but this is going to go shove in a call. It's just a cooler. We just watched some poor guy get coolered for $5,000. Ripperoni, pepperoni. Back to the never scared B. Teo Le to Cool table. 6-8 folds, 8-9 folds, 6-10 folds, jack-7 calls, seems good. Queen-9 could raise here, could check, both seem fine. Sides to raise, jack-7 suited, fringe call, seems okay. I wouldn't call jack-6, I would definitely call jack-8. Jack-7 seems okay. Gut shot for never scared B. Laid a cool flops of jack. Gonna go check call here on the flop. Ooh, check min-raise. I don't really love that, right? especially with a jack here in this spot. I think we only, we're either going to check raise bigger or just check call. Don't really love the check min raise here. It does go check min raise though and queen 9 has an easy call. And now jack 7 even when the even when the 6 comes off, we still check, right? Like that it can't be great if the like the only brick in the deck comes off and we're like check, right? It can't be great. So, uh he does check here. Never scared B has a decision to make. Should we bluff as played? Remember, our opponent check min raise. So it's like, what does he have that can be possibly? If he has an eight, check min raise, check. Either he has an eight or something that's not very good, seems like to me. So never scared B could definitely bet 75, 80, 85, and just see what his opponent does or check back. Both seem fine. I like this bet here, though. Against the check min raise, it's like, what? Does go check call. River King, check. And never scared B knows he can only win if he bluffs. The thing is, though, 10-9 missed. You know, against the check min raise, we could have a bunch of hands that are just like, you know, queen 10, queen 9, 10, 9, 8, 7, uh, sorry, 9, 7, 10, 7. Right? There are a variety of hands that missed. 
Also, if our opponent does have a jack, let's say he has queen jack, jack 10, you know, we're chopping in that spot. Maybe he gets really stubborn there. Right? You really, as never scary B, you really shouldn't have too many kings in this spot unless it's what, king 8, king jack, ace king maybe. Does go all in here and lay to cool. Tough spot on the end. I mean, tough spot. Has to call 226 to win 500, so getting a little better than 2 to 1 here. Does he win 30% of the time? Uh, apparently, uh, he thinks so and finds the call. Or does he fold? No, he calls. By the way, it took me like uh, maybe 17 hands into this to realize that every hand goes to showdown because, you know, hey, that's how they know the cards. <laughs> took me a while because you can see all the cards here. So obviously, there's some uh, poker stars superpower being going on. But knowing, you know, they'd only show the hands that go to showdown for fairness sake, I suppose. So uh, interesting spots. King nine folds. King king raises. A seven suited calls. Six eight should not call here, and it does not. Set for Lioeli. Bet's half pot. Bandit calls. Bandit drawing dead here on this turn. I would like to see Leoli. I wouldn't mind a check, to be honest, but betting is certainly fine as well. I think both have reasonable options, are reasonable options, depending on what you think your opponent is doing. Against this big bet here, we should just fold, right? A7 doesn't beat anything in this spot. We don't beat ace-king, ace-jack, king-jack, uh, queen-ten, sets. We should just fold here, right? There's but a, wow, no reason to call this. River-ace. I mean, if we're going to call the turn, we're not going to fold the river. Wow, a check! All in and a call. Nice check here on the river, although you could have just shoved and got the same result. And there you go. $600 pot over to Lioeli. Mm, toughest name for the very last hand. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little journey in uh, short deck with me. Uh, some interesting hands there. Um, and Short Deck is a beautiful game. If you haven't tried it yet, I would highly encourage you to check it out. It's now available on Poker Stars for both real and play money. So check that out if you haven't yet. Uh, I would love to play some Short Deck this year. I'll be back streaming on Poker Stars later this year and would love to play some Short Deck. And there are obviously some pretty low stakes, even lower than the stakes that we showed. So you don't have to necessarily play high stakes. Um, some lessons generally. Uh, I... The first lesson is nobody knows what they're doing, really. No one really knows. So if you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I should play. Well, nobody really knows how to play. So what a better time to go in. Don't you want to play a game when nobody knows about how to play optimally? People are still figuring it out. So I would definitely encourage you to get in there, try, use the Run It Up replayer. That's riuplayer.com uh, to show hands. You know, we have one of the, I don't know if there's too many functional short deck replayers that work, but ours does so check that out on riu player and uh, if you enjoyed the show let me know on twitter at jason somerville i do stream on runitup.tv you can learn more about uh, all of our run it up uh, activities on runitup.com uh, there's also two short deck events at run it up reno it's uh, an event we've done now for many years this will be our eighth run it up reno happening april 12th to the 22nd you can find the schedule, information, all that good stuff at runitupreno.com. I think we have a $100 buy-in short deck and a three or $400 buy-in short deck. So you can come play some short deck, both cash and 20s at Run It Up Reno as well. Thank you for watching the video. I haven't done a YouTube video in uh, what feels like 82 years. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll be back for more action uh, very soon. Thanks for watching. Peace.